A typical customer service experience requires multiple conversational twists and turns to achieve the required outcome. Stick around to learn how Dialogflow CX simplifies a complex conversational experience. Hi, I'm Priyanka Regaria, and in this episode of Deconstructing Chatbots, we will help our friends at Pugs understand exactly how a Dialogflow CX conversation is defined and visualized as a state machine. Like any e-commerce company, Pugs has customers that call in for ordering cute dog shoes and for returning or exchanging them. As you can imagine, each of these topics require multiple conversational turns for the virtual agent to acquire necessary information for that customer. That's where flows come in. Flows are used to contain and control the definition of these topics and their associated conversational paths. Here's how this works. Every agent is automatically created with one flow called default start flow. Sometimes the single flow may be all you need for a simple agent. Look at this example. Default start flow here provides store hours, store location, and helps place new orders. But Pug's case is a bit more complicated. They have different development teams handling orders, returns, and exchanges. For situations like this, agents require additional flows. In this case, the default start flow, which is automatically created with the agent, leads to the three additional flows for orders, returns, and exchanges. So the three teams can manage them independently and use the default start flow as a single entry point into the conversation. Now, if we double click on any flow, we find that it's a collection of pages which represent the state of the CX session. At any given moment, exactly one page is the current page and the current page is considered active and the flow associated with that page is considered active as well. Every flow has a special start page. When a flow initially becomes active, the start page becomes the current page. And depending on where the user is in the conversation, the current page will either stay the same or transition to another page. Now let's understand pages. Think of pages in CX as web pages. When we fill the fields in the form on a web page and submit it, we receive a corresponding response. Similarly, a page in CX has a form that is configured to collect information or parameters from the end users. This information is relevant to the conversation state on that page. Transition routes decide where we want to route the user from the current page. Now, let's see this in our Pugs use case in the CX console. I've created an agent already to explain these concepts, but don't worry, we will be creating this agent from scratch in the next episode. For now, if we go in the order flow, we see the start page, which will become active when the order flow triggers and routes to the collect information page, which collects the parameters shoe size and the color and routes the customer to the confirmation page. If the user confirms, we end the flow with the end flow page. And if the user does not confirm, then the page routes them back to the collect information page to capture those parameters of shoe sizes and the color. For more details on the life cycle of a page, I've added the links in the description. The transition routes would depend on intents, which represent something our users want to do during a conversation with our agent. For example, here in Pug's order flow, the start page has a transition route to order intent, where we expect the user to provide us the size and the color of the shoe they want to buy. Here, we also add the multiple training example phrases for what customers might type or say. Depending on what they say, the intents are matched appropriately and the parameter values are extracted, such as the size and the color of the shoe. Now, if you've used Dialogflow Essentials, then I want to point out here that the intents in CX have been simplified to make them more reusable resource. Going back to the parameters, they have a name and entity type. Entities are used to control how data from the end user input is extracted. So here, the sys.color is a system entity that refers to color, and size is a custom entity that refers to the shoe size. Now back to the page for a second. If the transition route from the page leads to a form where we collect some parameters from the user, we need to either do something with these parameters or provide the user with a response. 
In Pug's case, we call the order intent and have the user provide us with the size and color of the shoes. Then in the collect information page, we check the condition if both of these pieces of information are collected and only then we route to the confirmation page. Until then, we stay on the page to get those pieces of information. On the confirmation page, we actually get back to the user using the fulfillment. Here, I've added the static text, but this would ideally be a dynamic text based on the information coming from Pug's backend through a webhook. All right, so that was a quick summary of how pages and transitions work in Dialogflow CX, along with a glimpse of the Pug's virtual agent. Now that all the foundational information is out of the way, I am excited for the next episode where we will start building the Pug's conversational experience in Dialogflow CX. Until then, comment below to let me know your thoughts on this episode.